Today, Tokyo is an ultra-modern city with a giant forest of skyscrapers to prove it. It's hard to imagine that over the course of the 20th century, Japan's capital suffered two major disasters that reduced it to rubble. September 1st, 1923, 11.58 a.m. The ground shakes. The Kanto earthquake strikes. 10,000 people are killed as buildings collapse. But the worst is yet to come. In the neighborhoods of wooden houses, over 200 fires break out simultaneously in different spots when thousands of braziers are lit to cook the midday meal. And in 1923, an enormous fire raised a good part of the city. It burned people who couldn't get away because they were stuck in the rubble. People sought shelter along the rivers and were burned there. Things went from bad to worse. A tsunami washed over the plain and dealt the final blow. Entire districts were ravaged by fire and flood. The death toll was mind-boggling. Over 200,000 victims and two million people were left homeless. Damage was considerable. Over 700,000 houses were destroyed. The traditional disorderly urbanization of Tokyo, with its flimsy wooden structures and narrow streets, was blamed for the thousands of deaths. Practically two-thirds of the city had to be rebuilt. It turns out that the few structures back then that were made out of reinforced concrete were still standing. The Japanese government embarked on a vast rebuilding campaign to make concrete structures that wouldn't collapse or burn in the next earthquake. But 22 years later, Tokyo was destroyed once more. On the night of March 9 to 10, 1945, 335 U.S. bombers dropped over 1,700 tons of bombs on Tokyo. It was one of the deadliest air raids ever, causing over 100,000 deaths. A third of the city was annihilated. It would take Japan about 10 years to get the economic industrial machine back in motion and rebuild its cities, because Tokyo wasn't the only city destroyed. Hiroshima and Nagasaki were as well. So the population of Tokyo started growing again in the 50s. And it hasn't stopped since. It's still growing today. The Japanese had no choice but to rebuild their capital as quickly and inexpensively as they could. The city got down to business. Urban motorways, tunnels, vast building complexes. But turning the town into a concrete jungle didn't come without risk. In fact, it even had heavy consequences on the future of the city. Since concrete is watertight, it prevents water from soaking into the ground. The upshot, the sewers fill to the brim, and water spills over into the streets, triggering new disasters. Because let's remember that several rivers flow through Tokyo and its region, and some areas of the capital are even built below sea level. Not to mention the fact the archipelago is regularly doused by torrential downpours and typhoons. Typhoons are tropical cyclones, one of the most powerful atmospheric phenomena that exist. The winds are devastating, and the rains torrential, leading to flooding, rock slides, and landslides. Typhoon season is mainly in the fall. On average, 26 typhoons form in the northwestern Pacific Ocean each year, and more than a dozen of these curve toward Japan. By its nature, a typhoon already means heavy rains. But in Japan, twice a year you have the rainy season. If typhoon rains combine with those of the rainy season, it means extremely heavy precipitation that leads to mudslides and makes rivers overflow. And this causes a great deal of damage. We also have highly concentrated rainstorms called guerrilla rains. These are basically torrential downpours. Because of the sudden rainfall, water levels rise quickly and the region is flooded. To deal with the threat, the city has built the biggest anti-flood system in the world. 
located about 30 kilometers north of Tokyo in the city of Saitama. It was designed to control and regulate river levels. Beneath the feet of these Japanese retirees lies a colossal structure that limits flood damage. The government-backed project cost over $2 billion. The purpose of this facility is to regulate water flow to cope with the threat of flooding. We've built this system here to clear excess water. The system is made of underground tunnels, containment silos with pressure adjustment tanks, and pumps that can clear water quickly upstream toward the Edo River. Five containment silos, 65 meters deep and 32 meters in diameter, have been built. They're connected by a tunnel over six kilometers long. During floods, excess water from the five rivers is caught and stored before getting pumped over into a huge tank. Here it is. Its dimensions are awe-inspiring. 177 meters long, 78 meters wide, and 18 meters tall. Structure is supported by 59 pillars, an underground cathedral that stores water to keep it from flooding the city. Our pumps can clear 50 cubic meters of water, in other words, 50 tons per second. And we've got four of them. So in all, we can clear 200 tons of water per second. The anti-flooding system can drain the equivalent of a 25-meter pool in one second. The water then gets pumped into the Edo River. Tokyo is pummeled by torrential rains and typhoons. The pumps work flat out and clear millions of cubic meters of water. The system has proven to be effective. Every time, Tokyo has been saved from flooding. But the brave city remains at risk to its number one threat, earthquakes.